Hello everybody and welcome back to the ESL Legendary Series Season 2 Land Finals. Once again, my name is Osmo Cutie and this time I'm joined by Chalky and Life Coach. Life Coach is joining us. How are you doing, man? Yeah, good, good. I really enjoy my time here overseas. It's really great. Awesome. Well, you're going to be playing tomorrow, so you're looking forward to your matches? Oh, definitely, yeah. It's tomorrow evening, so I got a lot of time to prepare and to mm -hmm. sleep, so that's fine. And to get a little bit of research on your opponents. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Chalky... How are you holding up, man? I'm doing great. Casting's been pretty fun so far. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for tomorrow's matches, too. But we still have a bit to finish today. Mm -hmm. We still have to finish up Group B. But before we do that, I just want to get you guys joining in on the conversation. Make sure you follow us at ESL Hearthstone. Use the hashtag HLS. Let us know what your favorite matches were of the day, uh, what players you're, you're rooting for or looking forward to seeing play maybe tomorrow like Life Coach, and uh, keep joining in on those conversations. We also want to give a big shout-out to our sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. We're able to fly these 16 players out from all over the world and have them come here and play card games. And that wouldn't be possible without, of course, our sponsors, Plantronics and Gigabyte. So if you want to check out some gear from them, maybe buy one of the headsets that's on the bear behind us, uh, then go ahead and check out those links that you just saw below and buy some of that sweet sponsor swag. But we are about to jump into our next match. It is the winner's match of Group B, it is going to be Kit Kats versus Kalento. Now, Life Coach, you've played against at least Kalento a lot. What are your thoughts on these players? Oh, I mean, both of them are absolutely like great players. And um, I mean, Kit Kats, we know from like recent times, also like earlier times from his innovational decks. And uh, Kalento, of course, I mean, he's he's of course a top tier player. So we can definitely expect an awesome match here, like from both sides. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. Yeah. Chalky, we saw Kalento earlier take a pretty convincing 3-0 victory over Lead Paint. Do yeah. you think he's going to be able to emulate that this time around? Well, I'm hoping we see a bit more exciting of a pre-smatch this time around. But both players have patron this time. Both the patron players advanced. And both of them also have a Warlock Kit Kats with a Handlock. Uh, Kalento with the Demon Zoo. So the difference is coming in with the Hunter for Kit Kats and the mm -hmm. Priest. For Kalento. Yeah, whereas actually like the priest should directly counter the hunter, but yeah. as we just saw, I think KitKat's actually picked his handlock into the priest, right? Yeah. That yeah. would be really good for the handlock. Oh, that's insane. Like yeah. just just imagine like handlock dodging like or like actually um the the dodging of the priest like for hunter and the other way around getting like handlock against priest. It's it's so important actually. Yeah. And this is a pretty traditional priest, it's like the old school kind of mm -hmm. control priest so it's got even worse of a matchup than say like um the light bomb priest or something all right light bomb deals yeah, with like a board the, full of giants mm -hmm. it's clento's old version with a lot of the the steel mechanics got double shadow madness shrink meisters at least one cabal probably two mm -hmm. uh and the acera is in right now one the hand is actually pretty awkward <laughs> yep priest yeah. hands tend to be pretty awkward unless you draw like clento did in his first match he had what? Northshire Cleric, Circle of Healing, and Injured Blade Master in his opening hand. That was his opening hand. That's just... Thought Steel's gonna be nice, though. Oh, yeah. But prob yeah, probably not enough. Kit Kats <laughs> plays double BGH, so he could still Thought Steel at BGH. Oh, okay. Or he could Thought Steel double Ancient Watcher. <laughs> <sighs> Maybe he could Thought Steal that. Okay. Those are pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Molten Giant... Probably not going to get there that quickly. Kick out, uh, just going to throw a BGH out. I really like that one. Like, yeah. it's really important. It's a power four creature. So it's actually really contesting the priest. Yeah. Uh, I could even potentially see him hellfiring it away. But it's going to be really rough when Kick out starts playing his big threats, like the mm -hmm. giant or Drake and. Glento right now just has nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Life Coach, you said this matchup is tough. What does a Priest have to do to win this matchup against Handlock? Hmm. Well, actually, first of all, the question is probably what the Handlock has to do. So the Handlock has to draw insanely crappy. So really insanely crappy. And, and then Priest perhaps has a little bit of a chance by actually raising the Priest, uh, by actually raising the Handlock. So doing some silly, I don't know, like um, Okanai into a circle of healing, like Chaos combos, something like that. Mm. But really, yeah. like in general, it's, I don't know, like 
75-25 perhaps, or what would you do, say, Chucky? Right? Yeah, I think the main issue the Priest has is actually just killing them. They, yeah. can, they can hold down the board for a while if you draw your deaths, you know, maybe you can deal with the Drakes, but eventually you still have to kill them, and especially since Clinto or Kickhats was playing Draxus, there's kind of an end limit to when you can stay in the game. Mm -hmm. And so it's just going to be tough for him to eventually kill him, even if he can deal with these giants, which he can't. <laughs> <laughs> so this game's looking really bad for Kalento. Well, there's the second thought steal, so we might be able to get something off this, but... No BGH, though, because yeah, both are already no big out. games. Can't get a giant. Yeah, he can't deal with this one. So when the second one comes out next <laughs> right, time, right? Like kick has got to be feeling great. Yeah, he's just like, oh, no death. It's autopilot from here. Yep. It's a good feeling in your first game when your opponent Ooh. just has nothing. I mean, whereas his hand lock was favorite against all right, of right. the opponent decks, anyways. Yeah. Like sixty percent against yeah. Patron as well as against as against Zeus, So. So this is what we would like. This isn't a huge deal. The kick hats is probably going to win game one. Mm -hmm. So Clinto is definitely still in the series. He's probably a little bit relieved that Ooh. he gets it out of the way so he doesn't have to worry yeah. about finding a victory against the handlock later on, maybe. I mean, we don't want to count him out yet because there's still a slim chance oh, yeah. that he wins. Right. After the reason, I guess there yeah. is no... <laughs> if <laughs> if, if KitKats just plays threats, threat after threat after threat, and just goes face, he should just easily be able to win. Uh, he he has giant and a giant and a Thorison and a boom. Ouch! It's super silly. And there are no answers mm -hmm. from Clento. So if Kid Cats doesn't, these giants don't live for much longer, and then he plays Draxus and Clento Harrison's it and draws his whole deck, <laughs> and then gets the Akanai Circle Double Zombie Child Burst. He's in this. This is one of those games we were talking about where, you know, last time it was lead paint, Kalento's opponent not being able to play Hearthstone. This time it might be Kalento not being able to play Hearthstone. Doesn't feel too good, does it, Kalento? He drew one death. Yeah. There's the first piece. <laughs> it's not much. Uh, maybe maybe Kalento will think twice next time he keeps Injured Blade Master, Northshire Cleric Circle of Healing in his opening hand. <laughs> now that he knows how it feels. I think he would have loved to have that this game, but... Yeah. He's going to rope it deck? and potentially load them. Okay. okay. So he's facing down 16. Well, he doesn't even want to attack. That's interesting. Didn't right? attack. Yeah. It's interesting, like with the opponent being at 28. Okay. <laughs> I guess he's on a pure fatigue plan. Like, kill every threat your opponent plays. Deal with them. Molten Giants in your own time. Don't let your opponent dictate the pace at which they can play them. Uh, he's thinking pretty optimistically about so the game right now. It's like, if I'm going to win, this is going to have to happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to kill him by doing any damage to him. All the damage that needs to be done has to come from fatigue. Oh, man. <laughs> so you know, you know Twitch chat, him. they're just spamming miss three damage. Yeah. Like, if I were Kit Kats, I might have just gone all face. Yeah, probably. Ouch. Yeah, if he doesn't have to find a way to deal with this. Yeah. Right side, he can play a Molten Giant. You know what he played around is Thought Stolen Molten Giant Shadow Flame. <laughs> there we go. That's next level. I mean, Cat's too good. Was that like he? Uh, okay. Mm. Mm. I mean, Hellfire Shadow Word Death would clear, but. Yep. I wonder. Mm. That seems like a pretty good play. You can barely not play Molten Giant, which is sad, but. Yeah. But you don't have to worry about Molten Giants of Kit Kats for a long time because you're not attacking them. So yeah. He's going to still be at 25 health. And in that case, if you're Kalento, you're hoping he has both Molens. Because <laughs> those are just dead cards. Yeah. But uh, he has Dr. Boom. Do you think it's, like, tough to play? Is Jaraxxus ever a play? I, I know a lot of times in the past, 
people would say, well, you want to play Draxus as early as possible against Priest because they don't have to wait to deal with 6-6s six every turn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you think he's scared to play it because, like, Harrison Jones might be one of the ways that he loses, or just does it not matter? Mm, yeah, uh, I would usually just play it safe as long as you can play it safe and win the game to 95%. Yeah. And then once he's out of threats, then you just go for Jirax. Yeah. Mm. Kind of like Trump did earlier, where he held on to the Jirax for a long time because he thought maybe he could have a really high win percent without it, mm -hmm. without taking the risk. But then as soon as he realized he had to take the risk, he just went for it. Yeah, also keep in mind that there is like the 10 turn uh, that uh, turn 10 Jiraxus into Infernal. So he probably just wants to wait till turn 10. Yeah. At least. Well, that's a pretty dead draw. Doesn't really have a way besides the Sunfear Protector to activate it. Does he? Yeah, he doesn't have a way to get through either. Well? Well, I mean, you pretty much just big game hunter. And uh, is that... Is it lethal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think he has enough... It could be lethal. Uh, it very likely is. You can go... You can go BGH first and then Hellfire, what do you need to hit? Like 13... Uh, you need to hit like 3 damage with the bombs, it's definitely lethal, right? Like... Oh, you don't have to... No, 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 you cannot... Go. Yeah, Never mind. Uh, there's Never no mind. real even reason to go for lethal. He had a pretty high chance, but it's probably not as high as his odds of just winning playing safe. Yeah. Even if he doesn't go for the play, so. it's like... Well, no, well, well, actually, like, it would have been, right? So BGH um, hits? No, B BGH hits, of course. Like, that that was... Um, so if BGH hit, he was at 16, was he? Yeah. Wasn't he? Okay, yeah, so... Yeah, he, so, he put all the damage face. So if I go, he goes to 13, Dark Bomb, he goes to 10. So the two bombs must hit three damage for lethal. Yeah, like, he could have also, like... It's 6% that they could don't... Have silenced the... The giant. Gone face. And... Or Hellfired. And then dark, and then dark bomb. bomb face. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, but but then the bombs can <laughs> still hit the Doctor Boom. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. the the, the, oh, the yeah, giant. Yeah. That's why I think you just went for this. Like, no, but I mean, like, what's the likelihood that bombs do three damage? Yeah. Between yeah. both Not bombs, three. it's ninety-four percent. So. Yeah. There you go. But could yeah. he play the the Hellfire, the BGH, and the Dark Bomb? He would need the Dark yeah, Bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, he could. I think. Yeah. Didn't uh, he have enough mana? I think. Because I think he tapped, right? Oh yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah. So he tapped yeah, for he the tapped. Ancient Watcher, yeah. Uh, oh no, he tapped for the Hellfire. He drew the Ancient Watcher and he tapped into the Hellfire, okay. which only leaves him with six, so he couldn't play all that. Okay. No, six, six mana, right? And <laughs> yeah, Dark Bomb. Oh, for right, all right. One. Yeah, yeah, okay. It would have okay, been okay. seven mana. Yeah. So the bombs would have had to done six damage. Oh, but he lethaled him anyway. Yeah. <laughs> lethaled him. Forced him to concede, yeah. and it looks like Kit Kats is going to take. Game number one, and that was a sort of a, a result that we expected from the beginning from seeing that matchup. Yep. The hands, the matchup, none of it went Clinto's way. But again, he... not a huge deal yep. in terms of the matchups. He doesn't even look phased by it. Hey, he, he probably knew from the beginning as well. Uh, but that opens up opportunities for Clinto to play uh, his other decks to not really have to worry about the hand lock, which could end up counting it. Um, Kalento has Patron Warrior left, as well as uh, the Demon Zoo. Mm -hmm. So um, now that those are the handlocks out of the way, it opens up lots of opportunities for him to be able to roll over with, the, with those decks. What was KitKat's other two decks? Uh, he has the two decks of the tournament, Hunter and Patron, which, as we've talked about before, very hard to beat both of those. Uh, doesn't seem like Kalento really picked one to single out, just mm -hmm. kind of has a decent matchup against both of them, but it's pretty likely KitKats can get a win off both of them with three chances. Yeah. Hunter, Hunter is which one? Is it face Hunter or mid uh, It's pretty mid-rangey. He's running two freezing, one explosive, and the rest is all mid-range stuff with like web spinners. Oh, which definitely helps against Priest because uh, Face Hunter would definitely not stand uh, a big chance against it, right? I think I actually like Face Hunter against Clinto's Priest because Clinto's Priest has a lot of ways to like take the the mad scientist web spinners like hound mastered targets all right mm -hmm. haunted creepers and just kind of use them against you mm -hmm. and savannah high mains die to death so both i think stand a pretty good chance i think hunter's just in general favored but the the priest can definitely take down hunter with the correct draw oh you, you say hunter is actually favored against the priest or? i think the face hunter is oh not, all right not the all mid range right. Okay. hunter 
Chucky, one of the most he just, popular he just in the face. Popular face hunter players. They don't actually have that much healing in the priest class, yeah. ironically. So, and not much taunt. Yeah, Chucky made a name for himself by playing face hunter. You're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, not a face hunter in this match. The very yeah. mid range, and we actually did get hunter versus priest. So. I thought I was going to keep a Shrinkmeister, but I feel like he might end up just playing it as a 3-2. Yeah, maybe to like just block some damage early on in the game. Yeah, just trade efficiently with stuff. Yeah. So keep in mind, this is the winner's match of Group B. So the winner of this match goes automatically into the round of eight. So they get seeded into the playoff stage. The loser is not out of the tournament. They go down to face the winner of the loser's match as sort of the deciding match of the group. Would so you quick shot that? No. no. Uh... He's probably going to look to coin out the bow, I think, with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that more, too. Yeah, coin out the bow and then animal companion afterwards. Right yeah. Of course, he risked, like, um, shield, but... There is no. None, so... Yep, and there's the Hound Master we talked about, which, if it can connect with the animal companion, probably can. That's really nice. I mean... It's just so bad, like, if Power Shield would have come down, right? I mean, then right. that would have been, like, so awkward. Right away. I feel like, yeah, he'll just play the Shrinkmeister since he has, he's already curving out with his hand. Mm -hmm. It's not too many Shrinkmeister. You don't really get the luxury of being able to play Shrinkmeister Cabal in this matchup. So you're not yeah. too worried about the combo. Yeah, it's more like Shrinkmeister... Uh, Shadow Madness in this matchup. Yeah. Comes a little bit earlier. You're not at, under as much pressure, I suppose. This uh, Houndmaster is going to be really sick, though. Yeah, actually, like, the... Um, like, Misha is, in general, super good, right? I mean, against yeah. Priest anyways. Yep. But yeah, the Houndmaster is insane. Most health, most attack. Whoa. Yeah, but also, like, just because of the forward tech. Yeah. Like, it's just so, so good. Hmm. Yeah, Leoc wouldn't have been able to trade, and Huffer wouldn't have been able to trade with while living. Yeah. It's also such a pity like, that the Northside cleric, despite living like the whole game, didn't draw any, <laughs> any one not card. Any. Yeah, not the single one. Oh, I look at that. Like, it really gets it every. Yeah, like, you could. Wow. Juggler Unleash. Hunter's Mark here. Oh, yeah. Push a lot of damage. It's not like his turns are going to get any worse from here on out with the Savannah High Man. Yeah. Oh, uh, and, uh, yeah, ridiculous hunter draw this game. Yeah, it's such an insane draw. Uh, those knives are actually fine because he can clear the board. Yeah. Mm. And put six damage to the face. And even if he manages to deal with this board, then you just plop a Savannah high main down. And oh, he, he actually used uh, the what? <laughs> hmm. He just uh, what? Okay. I'm curious what the reason for that was. Playing into Holy Nova is probably. Playing into Holy Nova, yeah. <laughs> what, what, Just what, give what? him a chance. Yeah, why not? <laughs> but he also played so quickly, I mean, yeah. I'm not sure. It's like, like he, he definitely had something in mind, right? Which, by saving a 1-1. One -one. But it, 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 this player was also missing 6 damage, right? It missed, yeah, it missed 5 damage. Yeah, well, well, actually, yeah. missed 5 damage. Yeah, Which so. is a lot. So the question is, do uh, you rather want like a 1-1 one -one Hound? Or do you rather like to have like a <laughs> 1 heads on the minion and 5? damage on the face of your yeah, opponent, so it's, it's pretty I silly. don't know the reasoning. But I like Chalky's reasoning. He's like, I've had a good draw. <laughs> Let me give him a gift. <laughs> yeah, give him a chance. You if know. you have Holy Nova, If he cool. Holy Nova's <laughs> Savannah, I mean, good luck. <laughs> I mean, so. Kalenda plays Holy Nova, right? Obviously. I think he plays one. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. yeah, so it's just like... So, you can Cabal the 1-1, one -one, hope your knife. I think you get one knife. You don't get the knife from the Cabaling. Uh, no, but then it's lethal. You so. have to... <laughs> well, it's not lethal if you if you hit the knife on the... Uh, on the horn muscle, yeah, then not. Yeah. But otherwise it, it is. So. Yep. And he's going to get more bad news with another... Savannah Hymen. I mean. Yeah. It's the only thing worse than one Savannah I mean. They Travel in pairs. <laughs> Two Savannah I mean. Is this the Hound Master? Yeah, oh, it's also the very best. Actually, uh, would you have preferred to play it? Oh, okay, he, he goes for that, actually. But, oh, oh huh. okay. yeah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> but even then, would you have preferred to play Lothab earlier so that the knife cannot hit the Hound Master, actually? Like, just because, like, if it hits the Hound Master, you just lose the 4-1. Yeah, shouldn't he have quick-shotted the 
the juggler first. Uh, yeah, that would have been the best one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, he would have, yeah, absolutely. So, bit of a sloppy play. We've concluded I, that Kit Kats is in fact playing Hunter. Right, <laughs> Kit Kats is in one of those situations where you're so ahead, you kind of just stop thinking. You're yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. Cards, hero power, <laughs> stuff, go, go. Like, let's go, go on to game go. three. Yeah. And it's not going to punish him. No. He's going to win. Yeah, he's at such an advantage. I mean, that's. If he didn't not have the it. second Savannah high main, I guess there's like an Hawkeye top deck chance, but. Yeah, but like this, it's just. Yeah, he's just going to make trades. He's like, maybe this is a good trade, maybe <laughs> not. I don't know, my opponent's at eight. <laughs> Well, I guess it protects his load, though. Like, it protects more damage because he could heal the Light Warden, but I don't even know if he thought about that. Yeah, and that's just game. You wow. That's okay. a quick 2 0 lead for Kit Kats in this series, and Kalento's struggling to find a win with the Priest. And all Grim Patron Warrior has to win one of three, right? Yeah, I mean, that's very yeah. possible. <laughs> very possible. We saw that last match where we were talking about uh, Domnus had a patron counter lineup. And yet still, he couldn't take three games off of it. You know, he was only able to take one. Mm. Eventually, they, they're going to get insane draws. Mm. Sort of the combo decks in general, especially ones that are at sort of like the peak of their strengths, like Page and Warrior. Uh, some games, they just do things that you just can't deal with. Yeah. And it makes it so... When you draw 30 cards, generally if those 30 cards are good, you can't lose. Wise words. Wise words from Chucky. Well, KCATS is one game away from securing his spot in the round of eight. He would join Trump and Demigod from Group A. And uh, Kalento's got a claw his way back. If he loses this match, he's not out of the tournament, but it's going to be a rougher road for him. Starting to get late here. These players have been here for quite a while. They've been playing Hearthstone for quite a while. So fatigue might start to be uh, settling in for these players. And I'm sure playing one additional match, like getting later in the night, could start uh, affecting their play. Yeah, I mean, the loser of this match has to wait through another match. Yeah. And then they have to play one more match. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be in that great of a mood. They just lost. Yeah. So. Life Coach, you actually just played um, at the Viking House Cup. They actually won. And you guys were playing really late into the night. How does that affect somebody? Um, did that affect you a lot? Like playing late and in mm -hmm. the cold and stuff? Yeah, well, I mean. Um it has definitely been a long day, so yeah, your your concentration definitely goes down. You make more mistakes for sure. Like yeah. it was also a little bit cold, so um, yeah, everything adds up, and suddenly you play not A game, but rather like B, C game, and yeah, this could sometimes affect like important plays, of course. Yeah. Probably yeah. should just do it like Stan Sivka, like he always eats like two bananas yeah. in between each game, so yeah. that that definitely helps. He literally hires a banana supplier to drive out to every single tournament and just give him a constant supply of bananas. Is that so, TJ? That is. All right. Yep. Yeah, or you can just hire Makla, then that works too. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to trust you on this one. You should. You right. don't know enough to refute my claims? Right. So your only choice is to trust. OK. So Kickats has the Despite Patron. In the patron mirror. Um, Should definitely hit. <laughs> yeah. So these guys' hands are very similar, actually. Both with Emperor Thorsan, Fire War Axe. Both yeah. opening up with Armor Smiths and a Grim Patron already in their hand. Could very well come down to who can get their combo off first. Yep. For sure. Uh, it's very hard to clear patrons as patron. One of the few cards in their deck that helps is, like, Execute. Another player has that right now. Uh, all the whirlwind effects suddenly become anti-synergy when it's your opponent who has the patrons. Yeah, well, so that's an important one. Like, if you get the Dread Force here, you can actually shield one yeah. more patron, yep. so that's really important. It's basically like a patron, because yes. it protects the one patron. Exactly. I mean, as long as you hold him, I mean, obviously, Colento knows, so yeah. he, he's holding him, not stupidly playing it. That's really clever. And, uh, I mean... Also to mention is like that both players actually have Thorism in the hand and usually the one who actually pulls off Thorism first wins. So yeah, this is very be well with Colento here. Like. Yeah, very interesting game. Like Kickats could equip Despite over his weapon, 
and hit face just to try and be the first person to get off, but then he'd only get two patrons. Yeah, that's not enough. Like, you don't yeah. want to do that. Um, but it's really interesting. Like, Valento can just uh, turn five, coin into Thorazin, and turn six, he even gets the Warzone Commander Patron combo. Yeah. That's just so silly. Into uh, And with Corsair, too. Yep. So it, it's just so silly. Oh, so kick out. Uh, he's thinking about the Deathbite play. It's not bad. I mean, it's a 9% chance that he simply wins. If he, if he keeps a bit... No, really, like, if he draws in a rage, he simply wins, right? right. So it's 9%. It's, it's, not, it's not that low. Wow. 9% to win the game. I mean, usually you win if you get, like, four patrons. So. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. this matchup. Yep. You pretty much win. So he's going to go for the death bite, but after attacking. Deciding to wait one more turn. Um, yeah, right now, I mean, Clento has the better utility. Mm. But like you said, if Kit Kats can draw an inner rage, he has a really good chance. Uh, Whirlwind, not too bad. So do you just armor up here? Do you battle rage to try and draw another card to make Emperor Thorsen a little bit better? Oh no, you you will. Like yeah. after you play Thorsen, you can just play everything and yeah. battle rage. Yeah. Do you know whether it gets uh, placed like uh, double inner rage, one crew, or what's the build? Wow, armor bass. We uh, haven't seen the whole decks from these. We guys. have seen the whole deck from Kit Kat, but oh, really? I don't remember entirely. Okay. I think he had two inner rages yeah. and one cruel. Mm -hmm. We've seen like three games with Patron War that have gone to fatigue. So, so the cards are starting to just mix together in my head. Okay. So for Kalento here, he could make three patrons and a player Dread Corsair. No. Oh, or you favorite. could just Thoris in, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Both very, very good plays. Uh, with this play, he, he has the chance to pull off the Battle Rage if he doesn't uh, Commander and Patron next turn, but she might. Well, he's got double Inner Rage, the yeah. Commander Patron. Kickouts actually has Task BGH. Usually you don't get to, to get BGH value in this matchup, but that'll give it to him. I mean, but I actually probably kind of agree that you could even um, forfeit to play the commander. Just play patron, for yeah, sure. just for the cards. Yeah, double in rage. Damage isn't really that relevant. Yeah, exactly. You just get the full hand again, yep. and then you simply win. Stay ahead yeah. on board, stay ahead on cards. Life is, you know, pretty yeah. meaningless. Absolutely. Like, in this situation, for sure. So, yeah. it's just so good. Just get this one armor smith too, so that you can never die to anything silly. Yep. Yeah, it's really hard to just kind of burst your opponent down in this matchup. Both players are usually around 30. But so. do, would you not play, yeah, Thorazin and, and actually attack face is good. I think I think Thorazin and attacking face is a pretty good play. But, uh, I mean, what, what would you do? I really yeah. like this. And then face for sure. I mean, definitely oh, not Thorazin. Yeah, you right. definitely don't hit the Thorazin. No, for sure not. I don't know. I mean, what why should thinking? you? Yeah, because... Well, he knows he's not going to trade in Thorsan, and he's yeah. sort of setting up to where, hey, if you go for a big play with, like, Whirlwinds and Grim Patrons, mm -hmm. then you're going to kill your Thorsan also. So Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, you can just... Yeah, he'll just trade first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, it's like... Um, it's also that the, the nine life difference could be important. Like, yeah. It's not that it's automatically... I would... Matter. I'd probably set up my stuff, no. get a really sick battle rage. I think you get four cards... Mm -hmm. uh, you can play a free Corsair, and yeah, trade your guys off probably, and then your head on card, your head on board. Go ahead, kick outs. What can you do? Clinto going to do something to Warsaw Commander though. Mm -hmm. So this is basically the same play except instead of a bunch of cards, you get a bunch of damage. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Well, you guys talked about earlier, it's sometimes the first player to get Grim Patrons on the board, unless you're teching in like the anti-patron yeah. tech with Which Brawl. We know Kickouts doesn't have, yeah. and Kalento got to see that match just like the rest of us, so he knows there's no Brawl in here. Mm -hmm. He yeah. knows there's no crazy stuff. Yeah, I saw him over on the couch when he was watching Kickouts play, rubbing his hands together. And so Kalento really just got, uh, what did he get here, 16 extra damage? Yeah. Uh, from going for War Song over Battle Rage, just gonna set up lethal and. Uh, well, what, what what can like kids do here? Like he can actually produce the full board of patrons. Look at that, like 
He can just play. What patron? Ah, oh, nearly. Yeah, but what can yeah. he do? He'll have to trade in his patrons to his no, opponent's but, but patrons. But it's like a cruel Taskmaster. Taskmaster he sends into the pirate yeah. in a rage, like Whirlwind. Whirlwind, Whirlwind's everything, but. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Like he has a lot of charge, guys. Is it? Is you it... probably want to whirlwind last uh, if you can help it. You want to get rid of those two patrons first. Those are... yeah, but sure I, I think that's like. Um, I mean, you have to attack the cruel Tasmas, and otherwise you don't get like three patrons, and you really yeah. want to get three patrons with. I whirlwind. think you could go the five two into the the taunt, the two two into a five two, a patron into the two three another patron into one of his patrons, and then finally attack one of his patrons with your axe. Also, and you could full clear the board. No, wait, 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 that's, that's, that's bad. That's, uh, he should, he should, oh. <laughs> Yeah, he, he should have used the 5-2, so, uh, and then uh, run the 3-3 three, three uh, into the 2-3 to get another patron. Um, he will, okay. So this way he will get another patron. No, I was on must die. Uh, He'll end up with three. Okay, that's good, that's good. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's crazy it's turn. Yeah, Kickhats roped. We roped on our thoughts. Uh, I feel like he could have ended wow. that turn with more patrons. No, well, it was pretty good, wasn't it? The it was only good. weakness this has is if your opponent has a whirlwind effect, mm -hmm. he gets to clear your patrons. Yeah, there might have yeah. there might have been a way where you could have ended with a two health patron and a three health patron. Mm -hmm. Lento is going to go for two draws. But now it actually really would have paid off to actually play the battle rage beforehand, right? Like yep. with a full this, hand. This is what we were talking about. The damage, mm -hmm. not that relevant. Cards, very relevant. Mm -hmm. And now, I mean, Kit Kats has the lead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Huge lead. Yeah, he, could have he doesn't have card draw either. He could have had these cards plus more in his hand this turn, plus the patron combo. His opponent would be at 25, but that isn't as relevant as long as you can lock down the board. Because yeah. Kit Kats is out of stuff, too. Mm -hmm. And now what do you kill? Do you kill the fresh Grim Patron, the 3-3, yeah, or do you kill the Warsong <laughs> Commander? I, I think you have to kill the fresh 3-3. Three, three. It's like, going to spawn another it'll one. It'll spawn another one, yeah. yeah. That in your deck. But you then, have Whirlwind effects to deal with you know, the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Actually, also just coming shortly to the last turn, like what I meant is like if, if KitKats would have whirlwinded like before, like with three patrons on board, he could have actually cleared, um, I think, down to two patrons, like two, two patrons of Colento duplicate to four, and he has six, so he can actually trade four of his six patrons in, has like two full heads patrons, one goes onto the Warzone Commander, which would have left him, uh, I think, with one healthy patron instead of one three one patron. Yeah. But, I'm not 100 percent sure, but I think. I, and I, I know a lot of people uh, are in favor of executing acolytes in this matchup just to deny the cards. Yeah. When you oh, know yeah. your opponent is searching for answers, you can just deny that. Mm -hmm. No, it's really interesting, right? It's so close. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Kalento is yeah. all of a sudden in a if, spot where he might just get 3 0 himself. Well, if oh, Kalento yeah. can can somehow get out of this, Kickhats is just out of stuff. Ah, oh, but he draws one card every turn. It's not that bad. Like, yeah. I mean, um, actually, as soon as he draws into like draw, then he's very much just gonna chain draw. Yeah, but also in general, like patron, patrons cards are nearly like all doing something, right? Right. So it's really difficult to get a complete dead draw. Of yeah. course, not a draw which he will be able to utilize his mana, but definitely something with, where he can do some damage, like yeah. a weapon for six damage or something. Yeah, any weapon pretty much wins the game for Kickass. Exactly. Or any minion, like if you got the two attack yep. minion. Any minion with three or less, any a weapon. Actually, anything. Anything Ooh. not Harrison Jones. Yeah. <laughs> it's like one of the Ooh. only cards that he didn't want. Yeah, he's got his two tech choices sitting in his hand staring at him. And yeah. Yeah, but you just play both, right? Thinking any other card won me the game. That might actually be true. But any you, other card might have won it. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. But you, you just play both armor up, right? And then yep. you just go Grom against the How's one. How's your opponent going to win? Yeah, I would also just play both. Hopefully before taking the Chrome. <laughs> yeah, that would be a big mistake. <laughs> because then you can't play BGH. Well, I don't, BGH on the board, I don't know if it's that important, but it could protect you against if he it's, has executed your Yeah, Grom. Yeah, yeah, I think the BGH is super important to force Yeah, you can't let yeah, your yeah, opponent yeah, yeah. stabilize here. Mm -hmm. In fact, I don't think you want to trade. No. Your opponent will make that yeah, trade. Yeah, I, I also don't like it. 
This trade is more okay because you get the extra damage over two turns. Absolutely. And you protect your BGH. Yeah. What can Kalento draw that's going to be able to keep him in this one? Uh, yeah. Execute is what he needs. That's not Execute, so that's... Yeah, that'll do it. Wow. And Kalento, despite being the first player to combo off, mm -hmm. loses and gets 3-0'd. Yeah, he 3 0 his matchup against Lead Paint and then turns around yeah. and gets 3 0 Kit Kats, yeah. taking his... it back for the Grand National oh. Champions. Yeah. Revenge for his brother. Yeah. Yeah. And Clint, oh, man. Clint looks a little bit stunned. He's he's sort of just wondering what happened to him. He's not out of the tournament yet. He will face the winner of um, the loser's match from Group B, which is Domdis and Lead Paint. So he'll face the winner between those two. But mm -hmm. he's got to play an elimination match later on. He's yeah. got to sit around, watch another match get tired, and then play a match to, to end the day that's going to decide his tournament life. Yep. It's going to be a rough road ahead for him. And uh, looking at the next match here, uh, Lead Paint versus uh, Domdis. And both these guys, Lead Paint, of course, had a really rough road. He got 3 0 It was a quick series. Domdis, on the other hand, he got three. It was a really long, well, he got 3-1, three one, three right? One. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the series was still super long and super right. grueling. So pretty close. He, you know, had the potential to mm -hmm. 3-0 Kit Kat's yeah. uh, patron deck, but then it happened. Kit Kat's, you know, eventually got that insane draw with patron yeah. and was able to take it. And Kit Kat's talked up his patron play a bunch. Mm -hmm. Don't think he's lost with the deck so far, mm -hmm. or he lost once with it to Domdis. Yeah. So a three-one and a three-zero from Kit Kat's. He's through the Sunday. Yeah. Life coach, you've seen uh, Kit Kat's decks now. What do you think of his deck choices and his chances moving forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, pretty pretty good deck choice, right? I mean, all solid decks. Um, there was like a handlock, which I obviously like as yeah. a handlock expert player. And the mid-range hunter is definitely not a bad choice in general. And uh, the patron warrior, of course, is also tier one nowadays. I was wondering like a little bit about his deck choice. I mean, BGH and um, warrior definitely makes the handlock matchup a little bit better. Yeah. Also, like, but Harrison is really an interesting choice, isn't it? I mean, I, I really wondered what he, he cut out of the patron because yeah. usually like the, the slots are pretty neat. So you don't have like infinite of them. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Uh, probably cut like some of the more draw cards, and really tacking out with the BGH and the Harrison. Mm -hmm. Harrison can so. be a draw card. I mean, you can sacrifice yeah, a, right. a draw card for Harrison. If you expect a lot of weapon classes, it can be a really important draw card. Uh, it seems like it'd be great for the mirror matchup. Didn't draw it at a good mm -hmm. time that match, but if he had drawn it earlier, it might have been a blowout. Yeah. All Actually, right, well, the mirror tech is really nice, right? I mean, if yeah, you yeah. have your patron, then you can... I mean, you cannot play patron. And, ah, perhaps it's not insane, right? I mean, I was just thinking, you can verbend your own patrons, but it never happens, right? Right. On turn so, 10, maybe yeah. <laughs> play grim patron and then Harrison, his despite. But uh, we actually do have an interview ready with the winner from that last match, Kit Kats, on stage, who's with Dan. So let's send it over to them. All right, thank you so much, TJ. I'm joined by the winner of Group B. It's Kit Kats, who is just here uh, not too long ago, and you're back. How does that feel to finally defeat Kalanto in advanced groups? Uh, it feels really great uh, to get a chance to play as uh, play as credible as Kalanto, and uh, you know, just to win is is a thousand times better than that. For sure, you, you were lacking some confidence going in, considering of. Uh, you know, the prestige behind Kalento's name. Uh, but you managed to pull through. Is there anything specific about it? Because you 3 0 him. You didn't just, it wasn't a very close series where maybe you narrowly defeated him, but it felt like the series' score at least was one sided. Was it as easy as it for you as it looked? Um, I mean, against a player like that, I, I just had really good matchups. I had Handlock against his Priest. You know, he, he's playing Priest, and I think all my decks do pretty well against that. Like you saw, like Priest just struggled against the Hunter, and then he didn't even queue it against Patron because Patron just crushes it, crushes it too. How do you feel like Kalento's chances of advancing in second place here? You know, Lead Pain and Domdis did put up a fight as much as they could, but they end up losing. Uh, do you feel like he's going to go through second place here? I definitely think Kalento will win, and if not, I'm cheering for my teammate Lead Pain. All right, and the last question I want to toss in here is a little bit more of a loose one. You're wearing, I believe, Demigod's hoodie. So is there something that you want to share with the rest of the world here? Uh, I really wanted to represent my country and my homeland, Canada. And uh, he was wearing the shirt. He's not even from Canada, though. He's a Hawaiian, man. So I had to take it from him and, and go represent. And uh, luckily, I won. So <laughs> That's right. He was just posing. 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know, congratulations as uh, you do advance in first place in Group B. But we're not done yet. We still have yet to find out who is going to be eliminated. And we're going to start through going back to our commentators at the desk, who's also joined by another special guest. So take it away, boys. Thank you, Froden.